Hello, my friends. Welcome to another episode of Deep True Crime. I'm Manny Rodriguez. In today's episode, I want to cover the Crocker children who were murdered by the people they were supposed to be taking care of them, their family. And here's the thing. None of the kids were, re were reported missing when no one knew where they were. And so we're going to be diving into this case. And that's when I wear the step up, speak out to end child abuse. Because this should have never happened. Could it have been prevented? We don't know why people are capable of doing these things, right? But here is the truth. People are capable of doing these things. And it's up to us to speak out. And that's why I do this content. And before I dive into it, warning, this is an ugly story. It's sad at the same time, any story like this, right? But that's your trigger warning because it's not a friendly case. Let's go ahead and dive into what we know about the Crocker family murders. It all began with a welfare check in Effingham County in Georgia, and it turned into a gruesome discovery. The bodies of two children found buried in their own backyard. Prosecutors say those responsible for their murders are the ones that should have protected the children the most their family. The spotlight that is shown on the Guyton home since has unraveled years of abuse and neglect as well as past investigations into the family. In 2012, the Department of Family and Children's Services works with the Crocker family in Effingham County for nearly a year following reports of abuse to Elwyn Crocker Jr. And the Department of Family Child Services documents shows a caseworker meets with the parents and children separately at least twice a month. Their father, Elwin Sr., and stepmother, Candace Crocker, go to the therapy and take parenting classes. In 2013, the case is closed. And then, November 2016, Elwin Crocker Jr., 14 years old, disappears. He is not reported missing by his family. March 16th, 2017, a neighbor of Elwin Jr. reported to a counselor that she had seen him being beaten by his grandmother, Kim Wright, with a belt for more than an hour, about a year prior in 2016. October 2018, Mary Crocker, 13 years old, disappears. She is not reported missing by her family. December 20th, 2018, members of the Effingham County Sheriff's Office are called out to the Rosebud Place area of Guyton just after midnight. Authorities say they responded for a welfare check and a possible missing juvenile. But it quickly turns into a death investigation. You see, a concerned citizen called police after Mary had been missing for some time. Police arrived at the home for a welfare check and questioned the adults present about the whereabouts of Mary. It was quickly determined that everyone in that house was lying. The next morning, December 20th, Deputies were led to the backyard by Elwin Sr., where he confessed that both Elwin Jr. and Mary were buried there. A neighbor has since come forward to tell reporters that he witnessed Elwin Crocker carrying out some kind of activity on the grounds of the home with a shovel in recent months. James, the third child that was living there, he was found alive in the trailer 
laying on the floor of a bedroom with a blanket over him. James has been described as not having been abused in the media, but it is hard to say at this time what exactly happened in the house, and the fact that he was laying on the floor with a blanket over him does not necessarily sound good. Now, James' biological mother, Rebecca Self, she told reporters that he was likely not abused or as abused as the other children because the adults were dependent on his social security check. James had been placed in the care of social services at that time and Rebecca was doing everything to get custody of her little James. Officials, they are seen digging on the property for several hours with a hearse parked nearby. The bodies of Mary Crocker, who turned 14 on that day, and Elwyn Crocker Jr. are discovered buried in the backyard. Effingham County Sheriff Jimmy McDuffie announces the arrest of three people. The children's father, Elwyn Crocker Sr., their stepmother, Candace Crocker, and step-grandmother, Kim Wright, are all charged with concealing the death of another and cruelty to children. The sheriff says, I've been doing this 41 years, and a while ago, I almost broke down in tears. December 21st, 2018, the bodies are positively identified as Mary and Elwyn Crocker Jr. December 26, 2018, News WJCL interviews Rebecca Self, the mother of Mary and Elwyn Crocker Jr., surviving sibling James. She says, I was devastated. I loved those kids like they were my own. That was my first time being a parent before having my own kids. Then comes January 23rd, 2019. WJCL again speaks with the Department of Family Child Services about earlier reports of abuse to Elwin Crocker Jr. She says, since we closed our case, since the concern was no longer present, there was no need for us to be further involved with the family. January 29, 2019, Elwin Crocker Sr., Candace Crocker, Candace's mother Kimberly Wright, Wright's boyfriend Roy Anthony Prater, and Crocker's brother Mark Anthony Wright are charged with felony murder and other charges in connection with the children's death. March 5, 2019, during Elwin Crocker Sr.'s first court appearance, authorities discussed the abuse to Mary Crocker. He did admit that Mary Crocker was in fact kept in a dog kennel, naked in the kitchen, in the common area of the house, and she was zip-tied so that she would not get out. That is what investigator Abby Brown shared. Brown also said that Mary was starved, tased, and beaten for not exercising, not doing chores, and stealing food. She said food Mary was given was mixed with vinegar. She was kept in the dog kennel nearly 24 hours a day and was sprayed with water while still inside for showers, her joints getting so stiff that she was strapped to a pool ladder to straighten out. A photo found on Crocker's phone allegedly showed Mary next to the kennel, emaciated and badly bruised. April 17, 2019, the five defendants appear in court and plead not guilty. February 2020, prosecutors filed Notice that they intend to seek the death penalty against Elwin Crocker Sr., Candace Crocker, Kim Wright, and Mark Anthony Wright. The death penalty is not sought against Roy Anthony Prater. October 30th, 2020, Candace Crocker and Roy Anthony Prater plead guilty to murder. Candace Crocker faces life in prison without parole. July 15th, 2021, in the case against Elwin Crocker Sr., Kim Wright, and Mark Anthony Wright, Judge F. Gates Peed says 
He wants to see a jury selected and ready for a trial in early, early 2022. December 8, 2022, Elwin Crocker Sr., Kimberly Wright, and Mark Anthony appear in court for a pre-trial motions hearing. Their defense attorneys express a desire to dismiss the grand jury's indictment of their clients. They claim the composition of the grand jury was unconstitutional. Judge F. Gates peed, he issues a continuance in the case. Elwin Crocker Sr., Mark Anthony Wright, and Kimberly Wright are the the Effingham County trio that is accused of killing two of their children and burying them in their backyard. There have been more than 60 pre-trial motions filed in the Crocker case, but after a two-day motion hearing, this case is inching closer to trial. We learn that Elwin Crocker Sr., who is accused of killing his teenagers, Marion Elwin Crocker Jr., he was interrogated by police for eight and a half hours. The defense said the first four hours weren't recorded, but they want the court to listen to the second four and a half hours of interviews. Instead of reviewing those in court, the lawyers agreed to allow Chief Judge F. Gates Peed a private review in an effort to save time. On Thursday, January 26, 2023 of this year, year, the defense argued that the grand jury that indicted the trio wasn't random. They say one of the grand jurors was summoned twice, putting the entire indictment in jeopardy. On Friday morning of January 27, 2023, the state was originally scheduled to examine a witness about this, but canceled. In turn, Judge Peed told both lawyers he wants written briefs on the grand jury challenge by the end of February. Here's my thinking. It's that grand jury is dealt with by the end of February. That gives me February to fit in four and a half hours of listening to the statement. That's what Pete said in court last Friday, January 27. Court will meet again for two days in March of 2023 for what is expected to be the final pretrial motions. Overnight, the defense prepared a subpoena and written statement to be delivered to the FBI regarding DNA evidence, what rev relevance it has for the case, and how they plan on using it. We're looking at maybe end of April to send it to review. That's just a loose timeline. That's what Judge Pete said. There are less than a dozen motions that remains to be heard. It's expected that this case will move forward following the final pre-trial hearing motions hearing in March. After this horrific case has come out of Georgia, we are continuing to learn that there was a little good. You can never bring these two kids back. Rest in peace to those two little ones who, no fault of their own, were taking away from this world. But after this horrific murder case has come out of Georgia, this is changing homeschooling laws in the state of Georgia. Finally, lawmakers are attempting to create more regulations to protect children who were pulled from public schools under suspicious circumstances just like this. And it is reported that representatives Bill Hitchens, John Burns, and Ron Stevens of Rincon introduced House Bill 530, which would prohibit parents from removing kids from public schools to avoid complying with attendance and disciplinary laws. The Department of Children and Family Services would also be notified if a child is withdrawn from school without notification or stops attending school for an extended period or cannot be located. Currently, parents are only required to give notice once a year with the student's information. Stevens says the bill was amended to protect homeschoolers. He says the purpose is if there is any indication of a child in the school that has a past history of abuse, then it ought to be notified through the school system that the Department of Children and Family Services ought to go investigate it. And these two kids in Guyton fell through the cracks clearly and all we are trying to do is remedy that that is what they shared 
in many of the homeschool cases, children were pulled from public school to be homeschooled, which was easy for parents to do because of little to no regulation around homeschooling. Even parents with the Department of Children and Family Services or Child Protective Services cases have been able to pull their children from school in order to continue and escalate abuse at home without being found out. I've reported on this multiple times where this exact same thing pulled out of school. All of a sudden, no one's seen the children. No one's heard of them. Does that remind you of Lori Vallow by any chance? However, in many of the most horrific child abuse and homicide cases, DCFS was already aware of the abuse before the homicide occurred. And so there was very little protection. But now after this particular case, we hope that more kids can get some protection. Because it wasn't until someone reported these kids missing and then a welfare check was done that police and investigators went to find out. Then all of a sudden, the checking on a welfare state ends up being a murder investigation. And at the end of the day, this should not happen, happen to our beautiful young children because they are the future of this world and they need to be taken serious because they can't speak for themselves. And as someone who lived a horrific childhood for the first 13 years of my life, we are stuck in that situation until someone speaks up, speaks out to end child abuse. And my friends, these are some of the most heinous times. Why did this family think they would get away with this? I have no clue. You do not have children in the teenage years and not expect someone to not know something. My friends, this is why I do this channel, to keep you updated on what could go wrong in this crazy world we live in and to be a voice for the victims. They can't speak for themselves anymore. Rest in peace to these two young children taken from this world way too soon. My friends, if this is the type of content you like to follow, please hit that subscribe button. Click on that like if you got some value from this video. And if you hit that notification bell, you will get notified whenever I upload any content or I go live. My friends, please let me know in the comments what kind of content you want me to, to do d a deep dive in. I will do my best. I'm only getting better and better at this. So I'm trying to keep you engaged, entertained into this. I don't know if entertains the right way, but I want you to keep stay tuned. And at the end of the day, this is not about me. This is about being a voice for the victims. Because if I'm not going to be a voice, who will? I was actually blown away that this story has not gotten more coverage. Literally. Why? This is heinous as can be. And these stories like this need a lot more eyeballs because how else are we going to protect those children or speak up when we hear? Again, step up, speak out to end child abuse. I'm Manny Rodriguez. Thank you for joining me on another episode of Deep True Crime. Until next time, my friends, be safe, be careful, speak up. I'm Manny. Thank you for joining me. Peace. Have a great day.